I have many LMATCH antenna couplers for portable QRP operating. They're particularly useful for NFED wires, where you can typically get them to operate on most HF bands with just the one length of wire. Here's my latest, and likely the one I'll use most often. It has three inductance ranges, one microhenry, three microhenry, and eight microhenry. It's probably easier to explain the switching by looking at the circuit diagram. Here's the transmitter connection. The one microhenry is permanently in circuit, and the switch selects between neutral position, where everything's in series, to one end, where two of the inductors are shorted and the other end where both are shorted. When the switch is in the middle then no inductors are shorted and you've got the full inductance of the three in series. One microhenry plus 2.2 plus 4.7 which is close to eight microhenry. Then when the switch is off to one or the other sides then you've got less inductance. One side, both inductors are shorted out, giving you only one microhenry, good for use in the higher HF bands, and at the other end, one inductor is shorted out, giving you 2.2 plus one, or 3.2 microhenry. That's good for the middle HF bands, like 10 and 14 megahertz. This is the bleeder resistor, and here is the variable capacitor both halves in parallel. A great feature of this is not only does it have an enclosed box, unlike some way others like this and this, but it's also fairly small. It's about half the volume and half the weight as this one. Yes, there are some sacrifices, most notably that there are only three inductance ranges, one microhenry, three microhenry, and eight microhenry. That's different from this one, which has the inductance variable in 0.5 of a microhenry increments with the four switches. Or this one, which has a sliding ferrite rod, which gives you continuously variable inductance. A lot of the times you see descriptions and videos of L-match couplers that work well enough, but aren't physically ideal for the portable qrp -er. They might have protruding knobs and they can make a coupler much more delicate and bigger in volume than one that doesn't. There may be holes in the case. Again, not ideal for portable operating where you may be exposed to sand and water. In this one, I've tried to make it so that it's as small and enclosed as possible. Of course, there's still some things I could do to make it even smaller. For instance, instead of the toggle switch, which sticks out all this way, I could use a slide switch which is lower profile. The main difficulty with that is that unless you get a three position slide switch, you don't have the three inductance ranges, which make this unit so useful. Another area where space is wasted are these two binding posts. Yes, I could have just had wires coming out of them, but I like the idea of an antenna coupler that's detached from the antenna, so I can use different length wires. If you're out portable and come across a fence, you may be able to unscrew the binding post enough to put the coupler onto the fence wire, giving you a good ground without laying radials. Another feature is the use of a panel mount male BNC that allows the coupler to be connected straight to the transceiver without an intermediate cable. Having a look inside, the biggest component is the variable capacitor. I've connected both gangs in parallel but made sure that the capacitors on the back are set to minimum. That's with the plates not overlapping. You need to do that to ensure there's best top end range and that the coupler can operate on higher bands like 10 meters. You use the coupler by listening first of all and adjusting the switch and variable capacitor for the highest noise. At that point, you should be fairly close to tuned up. The results will vary depending on what type of antenna you're using, but these are the rough switch positions and the bands they correspond to. This is 
been a useful L-match antenna coupler. It doesn't have the widest range of matching. To do that would require finer steps in the inductance, but it's still good for many QRP and portable applications. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out my eBooks. Minimum QRP, hand-carried QRP antennas, and getting back into Amateur Radio. All have been favorably reviewed, and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. Visit my website, vk3ye.com, and follow the links, or search their titles in Amazon. You can also like the VK3YE Radio Books page on Facebook. The books are available in electronic form and in some countries in paperback as well.